Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ in today's Jury 3D model tutorial with the Rhino 3D software. I would like to show you how to create this vintage inspire pendant with the web structure and the mirror grain around it as a decoration. Are you ready? Let's get started. Let's starting from the scratch. Uh, first of all, get your stone first. You can make your own or you can download this file to use. Follow along the tutorial. The link is in the description below. Just sign up a newsletter and then you can get the link to download this file. Second, you have kind of need to decide how big this stone is going to be. Uh, my case is roughly about from here to here is roughly about five millimeters. So I'm going to stick with the five millimeter and you kind of need to see what is the proportion looking good for your pendant. In this case, maybe 20 millimeters will be fine. So I'm going to stay with 20 millimeter for the rest of the structure. Okay, so that's making the bezel first to making this bezel. I'm going to draw something like this and this is for 3d printing not for rendering so i actually would like to leave the bezel is a little bit taller for the jeweler that will have enough room to set the stone and so i'm going to have it something like this and coming back here so this is a little bit taller some people like to leave a super tall um, whatever how tall you want that's fine as long as you have a room to bend over and to clean off as a jeweler, you might want to be a little bit frugal. Think about if this material is a gold and platinum, how much material you waste. So I usually will have just a little bit over the table and that should be enough. You do not want it to have the bezel is too thick either, but it's better to have a thicker than not enough. If you have something like this, this wall 100% guarantee it will break. All right, so then you need to start over again. So my um, minimum is 0.4 millimeter. Anything smaller than 0.4, not only is not able to print it out, or maybe after you polish, it will be gone. But everybody have a different uh, method. I'm not always the right one. It all depends on your polisher, your caster, and all your 3D printer, right? So this is just a general guideline. All right, so now we have this. I'm going to making a bezel and I would like to have it a little bit tapered. So I'm going to pick up this point moving in just a little bit, that little bit tapered so I can put in uh, the granulation or a uh, mirror grain, kind of the B structure over there. All right, so now we have this. Let's go ahead to making the bezel. We are going to use the revolves. Since this is a round stone and the curve of revolve is this one and starting the axis is zero and you're just holding the shift to moving either up and down and left click and then moving your mouse to the top and right click for 360 degree click one more time and then you will get this one. Notice that the stone is completely inside of it it looked like really deep that's okay because this is for the 3d printing model and i've been uh talking the differences between 3d printing and rendering in my other video specific for rendering uh in the kisha rendering playlist so you can check out those videos as well okay so now we have this one and let's take a look on the rest of it we are going to making a sphere Type is zero and I like to have a diameter for 20 millimeters. So this is the design area and I wanted to them to go like really thin like that. So this is the reference for us to making a dome and the dome is going to be something like this. So I don't need the bottom. So I'm going to draw a straight line starting from the midpoint coming out here. And this is straight line moving back a little bit. It's going to trim the button over here. So once it's trimming, and this is will be a reference to do the design here. So I'm going to do my web design. So let's go ahead to draw a straight line from the midpoint going from here and go a little bit over our design. And I would like to have five sections in the middle. So let's go ahead to use the linear array. 
and we want to array for six of them because we're going to have five section and first reference point will be right here and we how and so the gap in between is four millimeter so i'm going to type it four and hit enter and holding the shift and have your mouse click it right here so that way they will be in this direction and we got six curve right here but it's divided this into five different section we need all this curve making a copy holding the shift and hit the all key so you can making a copy like this so now we have all this curve and it's not in the right orientation we need to rotate it for 45 degree so we'll have something like this while you are selecting your curve our goal is to have the curve on this surface the curve now is completely flat right so we need it on the surface uh, i'm going to group them first and then i would like to project it to this one right there so now let me hiding those group there those are the curve that we wanted to use we are simply going to pick up all this curve that we just projected to this surface and we wanted to do the pipe let's try the pipe radius for 0.5 in this case and we'll get something like this we no longer need this one but i always like to just hide my model instead of just delete them just in case we need to bring it back okay so then i need to make a rim out of it so i would like to draw a rectangle with the conic corner and i'm going to coming into the front view and draw something like this you can draw any of the profile that you like and i like this one to be more close to the center going up a little bit like this make sure that i can cover my uh pipe over there all right so then we are coming into the top let's go ahead to making a surface by using the revolve one more time because this is a circle and then the axis is starting from the zero moving up and uh, holding the shift left click moving to the top view right click for 360 degree click again and then we'll get something like this and I think it might be just only a little bit bigger so that can cover all this uh, connection over there all right so now we have this one we need to have this like b on top of it so let me creating one b first i'm going to using a sphere and snapping into one of the end here and deciding how big is this b so let's say i want to be to be this big so now we need to copy this B to every intersection. So I'm going to pick up all the curve that we have using selection tool. I'm going to pick up this B and come back to the selection tool. I want to invert my selection. And once I do it, I'm going to moving that one, change the object layer to other layer. So I can simply just turn them off. And this one and this one simply just hide it. Now I need this B to be copied on all of them. I cannot use the array because they are on the uh, different high. So I, simply I'm just gonna do a bunch of a copy. So this one is going to copy from this end and I'm going to snapping on every end right there and all the intersections. So make sure your intersection uh, is checked on your all snap so then you got this this and just bunch of the copy all right so now you have this that's turning back on everything else and look like they are a little bit too low so let's just pick up everybody and just moving up a little bit like that and in fact we don't actually need those four here so let's go back and delete those four and if it is hard for you to pick them you can lock the entire layer so you won't actually need to pick them and it's easier for you to pick only the things you want in this layer okay looking really cute now we're gonna coming into the top view i want to do a little bit about the decoration right there so i'm gonna making another sphere 
snapping anywhere for whatever size you want it and then you want to move it out there and maybe move it up to where the position should be and this one we're simply just gonna use the polar array so coming into the polar array and snapping into the zero and i'm going to guess uh maybe 20 of them maybe not enough we'll see okay so it's not enough you we actually need them to touch so let's do 30 of them like this beautiful okay so now we have all the dot on all the connection and it's up to you if you want us to have this one on the edge and all we have left is making a bell uh, the bell can be any shape that you like I was using this type of a bell and basically you just need a rail and you have the cross section you can do whatever shape that you want I want to do something different to show you and maybe we wanted to have a split bell so let's go ahead to do something like this I'm going to do a curve maybe it's going to split something like this okay and then um, on the side I'm going to draw an ellipse and it's about from this point to this point about this big or maybe we want to make it just a little bit smaller okay and then this one I wanted to project to the C plane so then I have two curves here one is this one is this and they are flat to the construction plan as you can see right there and you can rebuild this guy maybe we can keep it as an eight point but we want degree to three and maybe you can adjust a little bit like this one i actually want them to be fatter like this one so it's not like over oval shape it's more like a egg or maybe not egg I don't know what the shape of this gonna be but look like an egg there all right so the key is it gotta be straight all right to the construction plan all right so let's go ahead to do curve from two view and we got this one and this one so now we got this new curve I'm going to hiding this one here all right so what can we do with this new curve I can simply just give a cross section and come to the conic corner with the rectangle I got something like this All right and move it back a little bit like this and let's take a look we are going to use the sweep one rail one cross section and we get something like this done so that's one side now now I'm looking at this this is kind of huge so I'm gonna scale it down a little bit move it to the center and then i wanted to mirror to the other side using the zero so now we have this size split bell over there and if you like everything just go ahead and do bowling union into one piece and to making in the connection with this usually people will just do the jump ring so I'm going to make a jump ring like this and bring it down and making another copy and rotate it 90 degree like this. All right, if that look okay to you, we need to moving all of this down to here. So that will be our pendant for the rendering. I always like to move it like straight up instead of light down it's always look nicer and you can making a chain to go through and your rendering will look better let's take a look on the render view and this will be our pendant today i hope you enjoy this custom jewelry design inspired by vintage jewelry if you would like to see more of this type of jewelry cat design leave it in the description below and let me know thank you for watching and i'll see you next